morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We're going to get started here. Uh, my name is Angela Singleton, and I am a Rural Energy Coordinator and AmeriCorps member serving with the agency this year. I will be helping to facilitate and moderate the webinar today, which is geared towards people at organizations that are eligible to become administrators of a grant from our community heat pump deployment program. Before we jump into the slides, I wanted to start with introducing some of the other staff on the webinar who have been working on launching this program. While I'm doing that, I hope that you will take a moment and introduce yourself in the chat by sharing your name and any affiliation and your interest in the heat pump deployment. I'll start with my colleague, James, if you can start introducing yourself. Hi, thanks. Uh, I'm James Kogel. I'm a policy analyst here at Odo working on the program. And Doug? Hello. Hi, Doug Baer, uh, energy policy, or excuse me, not policy, energy incentive analyst also at Odo, sorry. And Kayla? Hi, I'm Kayla Barboza, and I am also an incentive analyst for the heat pump programs. Thanks, Kayla. Panyan? Um, Good morning. I'm Pandian Krishnaswamy. I'm managing energy incentive programs at Oregon Department of Energy. Thank you. And Patricia? Hi, I'm Patricia Phillips. I'm here to help you with the, uh, the WebEx meetings, or if, if you're having any issues, just put something in the chat. I know that Maria asked for a telephone number or a number, but um, if anyone has any issues, just let us know and we'll, we'll do what we can to help, help you out. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Next slide. In case you aren't familiar with our agency, I wanted to start with some brief information about Odo and our mission, which is to help Oregonians make informed decisions and maintain a resilient and affordable energy system. We advance solutions to shape an equitable clean energy transition, protect the environment and public health, and responsibly balance energy needs and impacts for current and future generations. We advance this mission through a lot of different types of work at the agency, ranging from policy analysis to citing energy projects to running statutorily authorized energy programs to save energy, support the state's decarbonization efforts, and make communities more resilient, including the community heat pump deployment program that we are going to talk about today. A few words about using WebEx for those of you who are new to the platform. You can use the raise hand function to ask a question and use the chat function to type questions. We really want to be useful for you and encourage questions. I will be helping to moderate and find times to pause and address those questions. For those of you on the phone, you can use star three to raise your hand and we will unmute you and call on you to ask your questions. Does anyone have any questions about using WebEx before we begin? Okay, um, I will pass the presentation over to James, one of our policy analysts who will provide a summary of the program and pause to address questions throughout. Thank you for coming. Uh, yes, I see we had a, uh, uh, thanks Angela. We had a uh, question on, uh, with someone with a hand up. Um, Patricia, you're able to unmute them just to see if they were just practicing there. Um, Hi, Maria, are you just practicing your hand raising or did you have a question? Okay, so um, we can mute them again. I think it might just be practicing um, hand raising. You can, uh, well, you do have a question. Um, so we can unmute you again, um, Maria. Yeah. Patricia, yes, right? sorry, sorry to, right. to interrupt. I this is my first time using this WebEx, and yeah. I try to be on my computer, but I it uh, asked me for a number, meeting number. 
Okay. Um, Patricia, are you able to help um, get Maria? Then the Maria can drop the um, information into the chat. Um, so if anybody's needing the the login information, thank you. Yes, thanks again, Angela. Um, so following the heat dome event in 2021, Oregon passed Senate Bill 1536 in 2022. This bill had a number of components, one of which was the Community Heat Pump Deployment Program. The bill appropriated $10 million for the program, which will provide grants to eligible entities around the state to administer the provision of financial assistance for the purchase and installation of heat pumps and related upgrades. We know that there are several other heat pump programs and wanted to make sure you knew that the program we are talking about today is not as a result of the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act. Our agency has, has staff monitoring the federal programs laid out in that act, but do not net you the timeline and details. The objective of today's webinar is to provide more details about the program, including what the next steps in the process are. We hope to build an understanding of the program and allow eligible entities to begin thinking about the potential this program might have for their region or tribe. As Angela mentioned, we really want to encourage questions today, so please raise your hand or drop a question in the chat throughout the presentation and we can pause at a convenient stopping place to discuss. The Oregon Department of Energy will contract with one eligible entity for each of the 11 regions in Oregon and one eligible entity for each of the federally recognized tribes in Oregon. An applicant may partner with another eligible entity. A partner may assist the applicant by providing or assisting in the provision of financial assistance. An entity may only apply for a grant for the region that contains the greatest percentage of individuals that the eligible entity serves or represents. If an entity serves a community that spreads across two or more counties, which are located in two or more different regions, then the entity must apply for a grant for the region that contains the highest number of individuals that the entity serves. Um, alternative boundaries may be proposed, but there are, there are requirements including consulting with an electric utility serving the area. The total amount of available funding will be less than the $10 million allocated to the program fund. Odo are able to use up to 15% of the fund to administer and market the program and also provide compensation and expenses to the advisory council, which will be comprised of representatives from the eligible entities selected for the grants. It should be noted that the grantees will also be able to use up to 15% of the awarded grant amount for administrative expenses and marketing costs. The grant amounts will be allocated according to the proposed criteria and outlined on this slide. A baseline of 1.5% of the total available funding will be allocated for each region and each tribe. This comprise, comprises 30% of the total funding. 30% of the available funding will be distributed to the regions based on the average heating zone for the counties in the region, multiplied by the number of households considered energy burdened, meaning that they spend greater than 6% of their income on home energy costs. 40% of the available funding will be distributed to the regions based on the average cooling zone of all the counties in the region, multiplied by the number of households that spend greater than 6% of their income on home energy costs. And each of the tribes will receive a portion of the funding allocated under the heating and cooling uh, percentage calculations uh, from those regions in the tribe service area. The amount will be based uh, upon the number of occupied housing units in the tribe uh, in comparison to the number of occupied housing units in the regions 
uh, within the tribe service area. Only certain entities will be eligible to apply for a grant from the program. A list of the entities is detailed on this slide. In addition, the entity must demonstrate it serves or represents at least one environmental justice community within a region or members of a federally recognized tribe in Oregon. Uh, and has the, uh, they also have to have the capacity to administer grant funds for the program. Um, if you're curious, environmental justice communities include uh, communities of color, communities experiencing lower incomes, tribal communities, rural communities, coastal communities, communities with limited infrastructure and other communities traditionally underrepresented in public processes and adversely harmed by environmental and health hazards, uh, including seniors, youth and persons with disabilities. The program rules will provide the basic outline of the program, but will allow the eligible entities applying for the program to propose in their application customized offerings for the region they're applying for. The program is uh, to provide grants to eligible entities who then provide the financial assistance for the purchase and installation of heat pumps and related upgrades to individuals who reside within the region or who are members of the tribe the entity has been awarded a grant for. Heat pumps eligible for the program will have efficiency requirements as laid out in the program rules. Uh, there's a baseline efficiency, which is set to the level of federal standards, as well as the higher efficiency incentive, which can be offered, but is not required to be offered. Um, this could make the customer eligible for a higher level of financial assistance. The maximum amounts able to be awarded per dwelling are also established in rule. However, the rules do allow the eligible entity to propose lower amounts in their grant application should they wish. This will allow an eligible entity to customize the financial offerings better to better meet the needs of their region. Um, we received feedback during the rulemaking comment period and are considering revisions. Um, please sign up for updates if you're not already um, signed up to receive an update when rules are finalized and uh, so there might still be tweaks to um, various aspects of the rules, including uh, financial assistance piece. Uh, certain upgrades are also eligible for funding. Uh, description is outlined on the slide. The draft rules also allow the entities to specify which upgrades will be eligible when applying for the grant. Uh, requirements for the project to be eligible will be established in the program rules, but the proposed rules will also allow each entity applying for a grant to propose additional requirements. Additionally, individuals who benefit from the financial assistance must be the owner occupant of a residential dwelling in Oregon where the heat pump will be installed. A requirement from the bill, which is reflected in the rules for the eligible entities to prioritize the financial assistance to the groups on the slide. The rules outline the method for determining whether an individual would qualify as being considered within an environmental justice community, but the rules also leave room for an entity to propose an alternative method. Attestations by the individual benefiting from the financial assistance will be used to identify whether the individual qualifies to be prioritized. Uh, an applicant will need to specify how they prioritize these groups in their application. Uh, I just saw a question in the chat about uh, when the rules will be finalized um, and the incentive maps and um, we'll get onto the timeline in just uh, towards the end of the uh, presentation in a, a few slides time. So 
So as I mentioned, there may still be tweaks to the program as we finalize um, the rules. Um, the rules are expected to be finalized next month. Um, so here we go, um, February uh, 2023. Once the rules are finalized, we expect to be able to provide more updates on the program timeline. Um, and um, then we'll be able to publish uh, an, the opportunity <clears throat> announcement. Uh, this The opportunity announcement will outline who is eligible, uh, which is already kind of covered in the rules, but we'll just kind of, uh, the opportunity announcement will kind of describe it again. Uh, it also require, explain the minimum required information um, that's required in an application, as well as outlining the scoring criteria that will be used in the competitive review. Uh, the draft rules also detail some of the information that will be required in the application. Um, so if you are curious, you can go in and kind of look for areas where um, we kind of detail some of the required information in the application. Um, the opportunity announcement will be open for a short window of around four to six weeks. The exact timing will be released in the opportunity announcement um, schedule. Um, applications will be accepted online following the close of the application period. The Oregon Department of Energy will ensure the applications are eligible and complete and conduct a competitive review of the applications. Uh, based on the competitive review results, one of the application, one application for each region and one application for each federally recognized Indian tribe in Oregon may be offered a performance agreement. I will just get through the, the last um, couple of slides and then start answering a couple of questions in the chat as well. Um, the performance agreement will provide details of the requirements of the grantee and the terms and conditions of the grant uh, requirements around record keeping, reporting and compliance monitoring are detailed in the rules and they'll, they'll be built into the performance agreement. Uh, this includes retention of records by the grantee, submission of an annual report, and cooperation in any inspections or other monitoring actions taken by ODO. The grantee will also be required to conduct and keep records of their own inspections of heat pump installations. Uh, if partnering, the grantee must require by contract and monitor the com partner's compliance with the program requirements. Um, so thank you for joining today. I hope this provides a little more information about the program. Um, as you can see, there's, uh, there are potential for an applicant to fashion a program from what is outlined in the rules uh, or to customize the program within the limits set in the rules. Um, those rules, there'll be some, again, uh, we're just reviewing the public comments um, and we will be publishing finalized rules in next month. Uh, there may be some tweaks from what was published in the draft rules. Um, so we'll continue to provide updates on the program uh, as the rules are finalized and when the opportunity announcement is published. So I'd encourage, if you're not already signed up to the email announcement to uh, sign up for that. Um, and I can start uh, and cover some of the questions um, in the chat. Yeah, James, I can uh, point you to those. I also wanted to remind people on the phone that if they wanted to raise their hand, they can press star three uh, and we'll unmute them. Um, but yeah, there are a couple in the chat uh, there, James, already. Right. Um, I just wanted to cover one piece on our efficiency requirements as well. Uh, that was one piece we're also kind of reviewing in the finalized review, um, making sure our higher higher efficiency values are consistent with other already existing programs, uh, as well as uh, kind of reviewing the recently released um, gangs around the federal tax credits. So um, just wanted to highlight that and then I can start working through the chat. Thanks, Angela. Uh, so the, uh, I'll take John, uh, your question about the upper limit uh, to the amount of uh, money. And the uh, rebates are per dwelling. Um, 
so it's a kind of it's getting maxed cap at um, an amount per dwelling um, and up to 100% uh, up to 100 of the, the cost of the installation. Um, and then there's also, again, the addition um, that's for the heat pump installation, but then you can also get the additional uh, price, of, the cost of the upgrade as well, up to um, the max cap for the upgrade. So it'll be the max cap for the heat pump installation per dwelling and the max cap for the the upgrade um, per dwelling, and they can be stacked on top of each other. Um, and these uh, rebates will be, um, again, this is kind of customizable for the region. Uh, we're setting the max, and then within uh, a regional entity will be able to apply and propose how they want to, to run it in, in their region as well. So we're trying to provide the, the framework to allow um, regional entities to to customize it for their region. Um, so can there be more than one successful application per region? Um, so we'll be awarded a contract for one regional entity per region. Um, that, that regional entity can partner with um, other eligible entities, but they would be the lead uh, and who the performance agreement is uh, signed with through uh, with the Oregon Department of Energy. Um, if an alternative boundary were proposed and accepted, then um, that could be an area where there is a, just a redefining of the, the program, uh, the boundaries of the region, but um, there would only be one entity um, kind of a, a performance human with one entity for a region, and then um, they could partner, but they would have to outline their partners in the the application process. Hey, James, we've got a, several questions coming in, so I'm going to help um, keep oh, track great. of them here. Um, for this next one, would it be possible for Odo to provide the funding allotment for each eligible region rather than the formula? Um, so yes, the funding. Thank you. That's that one. Uh, the funding allocation will allotment will be presented in the opportunity announcement. Um, we were just um, required to have the um, criteria outlined in the the rules, and then uh, we'll be able to present the funding um, allotment for each region uh, in the opportunity announcement. Okay, great. And then are people able to view the PowerPoint slides online or email? Um, I believe they will be able to uh, see the slides in a couple of days. Uh, they'll be published on the, the Odo website. Okay, great. Um, and then should the minimum on ductless systems be set at 8.0 or 8.5 to take advantage of BPA and local utility incentives on every project. Uh, lowers project average cost and may allow entities to serve a few more households. So I can just quickly start and then ask Stephanie just to uh, take over. Um, so the baseline, the minimum uh, baseline efficiency standards, um, we are matching with the uh, federal uh, standards uh, for 2023, um, and that's kind of a requirement that stems from the bill uh, that we at least match um, or exceed those minimum uh, standards. Stephanie, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, we we are setting two minimum efficiency levels. Um, one is minimum matching the federal guidelines, as James said, um, which we feel allows for a broader range of heat pumps to be installed. And then our higher efficiency minimum, which would be eligible for a higher level of incentive, uh, is going to be in line with some of those other programs. Um, as Jane mentioned, James mentioned, we're working on coordinating and, and making sure that's in alignment with BPA programs, existing energy trust incentive programs, and then the uh, coming federal tax credits. I'm trying to help ensure that if you're um, uh, complying with that higher efficiency standard, that then you'd be able to easily stack incentives from various programs.
Thanks, Stephanie. So then we have here a question about, so the funding could pass through a nonprofit organization that serves Native Americans in Oregon and go to one of their Native American clients that provide climate construction services. Does that sound right? So, um, nonprofits are eligible entities, and as long as they serve uh, environmental justice community, including um, tribal communities, and then they would um, they could propose to partner with other, other eligible entities, and how they provide that um, the actual installation as well is it would be kind of open for them to um to propose whether it would be like a, an open just kind of people come to request uh, apply for rebates or grants or whether there's kind of some other um structure that they would have for accepting applications and then getting installs uh, in i think is that um did that so the question if somebody else has any thoughts on that as well. Okay. Uh, and then the next question is about, um, is the population evenly distributed between the regions? Um, so, no, the um, regions, uh, these are the regions and there's the 11 different regions. Um, so the population isn't going to be um, distributed evenly, but uh, we've attempted to account for the differences in the heating and cooling uh, in the state, as well as um, the differences in population in the allocation of the funding um, for each region. Okay, and then there's another regional question um about does a regional administrator have to represent the entire region in which they're in um or um electric utility cover half of a county uh would they need to do the administration for the entire region so um we would be that eligibility can kind of partner to cover the entire region um and there's also a requirement that uh, utilities, um, if they serve a, just a smaller area of the region are required to kind of partner, um, to cover the whole region. And, uh, that's a requirement in the bill, I believe. Okay. Yeah. That answers that question. Um, and next question here is, is there a way that Odo could gauge interest in applying from each region and let everyone know? Seems like it would save us all a lot of time and work, Odo and us, to work together on one application per region. So we've uh, been hearing a few comments around um, how we can help um, collaboration within a uh, a region and so we're considering ways we can um, assist in uh, the application process and or at least in um, people working together uh, so if you make sure stay signed up if we are able to kind of provide anything like that uh, we'll be sure to let people know okay and then the next question is from a homeowner who is below 80 percent of the mean income for their neighborhood, uh, will they be qualified to receive an incentive to install a split unit heat pump in their home? Um, so it's a good question. Um, this uh, webinar is kind of aimed at the uh, people that would will administer the grant. And then, uh, so the grants will go from ODO to these regional administrators and they will operate the program. Um, and there will be uh, efficiency requirements. So uh, any heat pump that would be installed would need to kind of meet those efficiency requirements and then any of the other projects eligibility requirements. Um, so I can't definitively say that 
they would be this would be eligible um but if it met all the requirements for the regional entity then the application could go through them um so there's a few steps to to wait until um you can kind of find out whether your individual situation would be uh eligible yeah but the idea is that um uh we, the heat pumps will get installed in people's homes. Okay, and then we have a clarifying question. Um, so we will award one grant per a region, even when the tri-county region covers more than 40% of the population and over 20% of Multnomah County population um, is energy burdened. So more of a clarifying question. Uh, so yes, the the bill directs us to award one grant for the region. Um, obviously, the grants, the grant allocation are um, different. So there's a formula we weight the um, the funding allocation depending on population and then also the heating and cooling. So they're not going to, but not all amounts of grants will be the same. So there'll be um, kind of a variation on the actual amount that is funded to a different regional entity, depending on the the population in the region, the, the heating, the uh, heating zone and the cooling zone uh, for that, that region. Okay. Um, great. And then another clarif Oh, uh, John, I just want to make sure you met your last question about the legislation priorities for bulk fuel or the um, regional question? Okay. Uh, yeah, and that, yeah, that's another requirement from the, the bill as well of like what uh, factors we look at in allocation of the, the funding. Okay, so far that is the questions in the chat. Um, and yeah, for anybody that's on the phone again, is it uh, staff three? Was it to raise a hand if they were had any questions as well? That's correct. Star three. And yes, we had a lot of questions uh, about um, reg regional boundaries, and there will be an opportunity for people to propose alternative boundaries um, if uh, in their application. Um, and there's some requirements in the the rules around um, what that, that means as well. So in terms of what sort of alternative boundaries we will, will accept. Um, We have another question that just popped up. Um, could a single regional entity apply for the funding and then uh, make sub awards? So I'm just trying to think that through in my head. Um, so the regional entity will be responsible for the performance agreement and then they will be able to partner with another eligible entity. Um, and um, and so they will be able. There will be have to be a requirement for a contract between. Um, so in this example, um, there was an example of like between Metro and cap agencies, there would have to be a contract between the two entities around compliance and monitoring. Um, and, um, I would have to kind of circle back on, 
uh, with the team to kind of confirm the civil wards kind of and how we kind of track that finances because um, it'd have to be some level of um, kind of financial reporting between the the partner um, and the eligible entity but um, in that kind of principle that idea of partnering and um, implementation being done by not just the the applicant but by the partner agencies um, pilot organizations uh, is kind of built into the rules um, if that kind of answers the question at least loosely um, and then we can also kind of clarify that further um, in some kind of FAQ or something as well as we um, finalize the rules. Yeah, and then someone was wondering if there was a high resolution map available so that they can see exactly down to the street in uh, detail level where each region uh, starts and ends. Um, so the um, the regions are done on the the county county lines um, and are the regional solutions um, regional solutions regions. Um, so they're kind of defined by the economic development districts. Um, I don't have a high definition. Um, Uh, map, but uh, I can drop a link into the regional solutions um, website, and uh, that just kind of lists which of the counties um, are kind of included in each of the the regions. Great, that answered the question, James. And then there's another question about understanding that the program is run by administrators and is only for homeowners and manufactured homes will the rental heat program uh be administered separately good question yeah um so this is for this program um is for going to be designed for owner occupants um so residences uh that are owned by the occupant and then the the Oregon Rental Home uh, EPUM program is was designed differently in the bill, so that was uh, assigned to the Oregon Department of Energy to administer. Um, and so we will be um, setting that up. Where we received comment on the rules at the same time as we received comment on this program's rules, um, and we'll be finalizing those um shortly after uh we finalize this program this program rules and then we'll be kind of rolling that out um separately uh but we're obviously trying to coordinate as much of like the requirements um as is feasible uh, between the two how the two different um programs were designed in the bill um, and so that rental home program will cover um, residential tenancies and manufactured homes, abbeys that are in a rented space in a manufactured home park or recreational vehicle park. We've got a question here about the anticipated date for the invitation to apply. Sure. I uh, don't have a specific date um, that I can uh, state right now, but um, I did mention the 
program rules will be finalized next month, are expected to be finalized next month. Um, and then once we get that finalized, we'll be able to finalize the opportunity announcement. Um, once that's uh, opened, uh, we'll be opening the application at the same time as the opportunity announcement or around the same time so that um, people can put their applications in. Um, and then the application will be open for about four to six weeks. Um, but that schedule will be finalized uh, in when the opportunity announcement is published. So the idea is that we're doing these webinars now and we'll uh, continue to uh, release information as, as it gets finalized so that people can begin planning um, or at least considering um, what it might mean for their region um, ahead of uh, the release of the opportunity announcement, and then they can really kind of pin it down once once that's released. So there's been a, a, a number of uh, comments about the efficiency ratings in the chat. And I just wanted to clarify that we're kind of setting it at the HSBF2 values in our minimums. Um, is kind of what the, those values kind of were, were shown as in the, in the slide. Just to remind if anybody's on the phone and wishing to ask a question, I can press staff three to, to raise their hand. Happy to answer any additional questions, um, if anybody has any. James, can you explain again that this is a competitive application process and how that yeah, sure. affect collaboration? Sure, yeah. So the opportunity announcement, uh, when that opened, um, you have the application open and then the application, uh, application deadline will be about four to six weeks after the, the opportunity announcement opens. Um, and then at the close of the, the application deadline, the Oregon Department of Energy will begin to review the applications. So we'll check if they're eligible, whether they're complete, and then we'll do um, competitive review of the applications, assessing each application against the scoring criteria that will be detailed in the opportunity announcement. Um, and then uh, the kind of will be awarding uh, performance agreements uh, to uh, to the kind of based upon that competitive review. Um, again, it's just kind of we'll have. Um, there'll be the one application and they can partner with uh, other entities for those who are collaborating. Um, or if there's multiple uh, applications by different entities in the region, then those will be competitively reviewed um, against one another to, to kind of assess uh, who's going to deliver the best program. Um, 
or uh, well, not necessarily who's going to be the best swimmer, who, who's going to um, meet all the, the scoring criteria um, is kind of how it will be scored. And, uh, those will kind of all be detailed out in the opportunity announcement with a lot of the, the required information that's listed um, in the opportunity announcement, but kind of stems from uh, the rules and areas uh, in the rules. Um, and then we kind of dumped a lot of information um, today and those slides will be available uh, in a couple of days time on the program website. Um, and if you have questions after today, or once you kind of see the slides and start thinking about it, um, feel free to drop, uh, an email to the, the team's mailbox. So I've put it on the slide here. Maybe we can drop it in the, the chat again as well. Just so, um, everybody has it in the easy to, to grab. And for anybody that um, is joined by phone and can't uh, necessarily see the chat, um, the email is community.heapump, all one word, at energy.oregon.gov. But again, the, the, the slides will be up um, in a couple of days' time, and you'll be able to see that. Um, you can see the slides, and you can kind of drop us an email if need be. Let's give a moment for any final questions to come in. And if there's uh, no more, then um, we can finish for the day. Good question. Um, thank you for that, Julia. Um, so I would say begin with to start preparing. Um, may start reaching out to organizations in your area who might be interested if you are looking for partners um, or uh, ways you can collaborate in your region. And again, uh, we take, have taken on board um, interest in ways we can help people collaborate. Um, but in terms of preparing for an application, um, I would just, just kind of refer you to at this point, look through the draft rules that were published. Um, and in there, there's a list of kind of required information that will be done, but then also it kind of lists areas where the um, program could be customized um, or where we request information for instance, like how uh, in there, there's kind of a line saying that the entities need to kind of in the application detail how uh, they will prioritize the, the priority groupings in EJ communities, bulk fuels, uh, people that don't have um, heating and cooling in their homes. Um, and so kind of thinking through some of those questions and how that might, um, how might, how that might look for a program uh, in, in your region. I think those would be some uh, early steps to, to consider um, so that you're prepared for when the opportunity announcement comes out. Um, and again, take a look at when the final rules are published uh, because there will be tweaks to that as well um, based upon kind of comments and um, to make sure that you have the, the most up-to-date information this year preparing. Um, so 
So Patricia's put the the bill information um, and kind of we established the the program, and then if Patricia able to put the the link to the draft rules in as well into the chat, um, and people can see the the draft rules as well. The draft rules are available from our web page as well. Thanks, Doug. Um, Okay, so um, not seeing any of the question. We're almost at time as well. Um, so appreciate everybody's um, time and energy today and all the, the great questions. Um, please keep a, an eye out for any future uh, webinars or um, information that we'll, we'll send out uh, as we continue to finalize the rules. And uh, so thank you very much. Um, appreciate you coming today. This is the end of the webinar. Thank you.